Life. Life is a disease. A millennium ago, a supreme necromancer was on the verge of conquering the world. But you know what they say about best laid plans. Hmm? Inevitably, heroes shall emerge. So, I was made dead. Again. But what does death really mean for somebody who has mastered it? Hmm? An eternity to ponder my errors, and how close I came to victory. I am a mortal, but when this world ends, even I will know oblivion. Will I be given another chance to rise before it happens? Another chance to fulfill my ambition? Ah, it seems that fate has smiled after all. Yo, that's a pretty cool cutscene. What's up, everybody? Brian with you from the Game Common, and we are playing some Aratus Lord of the Dead. So, this is a game that dropped onto Early Access this week. It is a roguelike that plays essentially almost the same uh, as Darkest Dungeon. However, unlike Darkest Dungeon, you're not controlling a group of heroes, you are controlling the undead, and you are basically going through a dungeon and killing a bunch of, you know, heroes slash humans slash whatever so let's go ahead and start into the game um, this was just a quick one I played and then we played about 45 minutes I just played through the tutorial um, I am gonna choose the cakewalk difficulty just to make this a little easier apparently the game is quite difficult from what I've read um, in the tutorial it wasn't so hard but we were playing on the cakewalk difficulty um, but I heard that it gets pretty pretty difficult here number one number two uh, since this game just launched into early access the balance is gonna be all messy right now so Playing on Cakewalk is probably going to be a little more forgiving in case we build our uh, party in a bad way. So, uh, if you've never seen Darkest Dungeon, essentially what happens is we're going to uh, march into a bunch of different battles with our four army here. And uh, essentially, it's going to be kind of like a 2D fight in which uh, these four guys have their position and then they're going to match up against enemies, uh, usually up to four enemies that are going to have uh, positions facing us. And now, every single unit we have... Uh, kind of has different uh, uh, abilities. Well, every uh, well, okay, let's actually talk about it this way So we right now have access to six different minions that we can create as we uh, level up some units And as we kill enemies, we can start unlocking new units that we can craft uh, But essentially right now we only start with these six every one of these six have uh, six abilities each uh, Well five abilities and then one ultimate we'll get into the ultimate here in a little bit uh, But every attack can only attack different uh, units in different positions so for example if we look at the dark knight here his first ability is called heartless slash so you'll see the four yellow skulls well two gray two yellow and then two red and two uh gray uh helmets the skulls are essentially where he can attack or where he can use the ability from so he can only use heartless slash in one of the first two positions so as long as he is in one of these first two slots and then he can only attack enemies that are in one of the first two uh positions as well so if he was back here he wouldn't be able to use Heartless Slash, and it, uh, he also wouldn't be able to attack these two slots with Heartless Slash. Um, the other thing to note is every unit in the game can not only do physical damage, but they can also do stress damage. Well, okay, not every unit. Some units can only do stress damage, some units can only do physical damage. Uh, stress damage is essentially uh, something that you don't have a, like, none of your units will take stress damage, uh, but the units you attack will sometimes take stress damage. Uh, the thing is, stress, they usually have less stress HP. I don't know what it's called uh, in this game versus vigor uh, HP, so it usually is a little easier to kill them by doing stress damage, but it's also 
also a little random where when they hit zero, uh, they don't necessarily die. If they get to zero vigor, they just immediately die. Uh, if they get to zero stress damage, you have to do a, a stress attack on them and sometimes they'll die, sometimes they won't die and they basically have a heart attack. So to start with, we got a very physical uh, looking army. Most of these units here will do physical damage, which is kind of what we want. We'll look at them here in a little bit. We can also rename them and stuff. But before we get there, let's go ahead and look at everything else in the game. This is our map. It kind of looks a little bit like Darkest Dungeon. Uh, sorry, not Darkest Dungeon. It looks a little bit like uh, Slay the Spire. So essentially, we're trying to get to the boss at the end. And they have different pathways. And you can only go one pathway. You can't go backwards. So once we finish this first battle, then we'll have the option of going towards the Ancient Coffin or towards the Grave. Um, we got Fountain of Restorations, uh, which allow you to heal either your Vigor or your Mana for um, uh, Radis, which is kind of your character. But we'll, we'll talk about him a little bit. Bit later and once again you can't go backwards so if we pick this ancient coffin we have to then go up this way and it looks like for the most part we won't have too many different options uh, branching this one's a little um, there's not as many branch options on this one so uh, the other thing is we can come here like we said earlier and we can create any of these units you basically create them by filling the different slots with these items over here these items you pick up at the end of the battle every time you end up uh, winning a, a victory you can then pick up new items uh, it's all pretty random oh I don't want to go there uh, it's all pretty random so you know you might find yourself running out of kind of flesh and stuff like that so then you wouldn't be able to create units that have flesh uh, and stuff like that um, the Banshees so the two units we're not rolling with right now are the Banshee and Wraith both are very much uh, uh, stress attack oriented so I think I'm okay with kind of ignoring them for the time being we'll talk about everyone's abilities uh, as we get there but I'm not super worried about that also then we have the graveyard and this works very similar to the town in darkest dungeon we can go ahead and start putting units like we can uh, rebuild some of these buildings as we have enough points uh, so if I sacrificed a that looks like a skeleton yeah if I sacrifice a skeleton here then I can rebuild the excavation and then I can put a new unit here which then gives me a random part after every battle and so uh, over here we have the mortuary and we can just throw someone there to heal up after every battle so it'll fully restore their vigor. If you have someone not in combat, so uh, anytime you go into uh, the uh, uh, the mission or into the map, you basically pick an army to go marching out. Obviously you're going to want to use a group of four every single time, but anyone that isn't in combat, so for example if we took these two guys out to the first battle, these guys would heal HP. So. That's kind of what we want. Uh, how do we want to do this? I think we want to go like this. This is the army we want to go with. And we'll, we'll talk about why we're doing it in that position here in a minute. Uh, so then that's the graveyard. I am going to go pick up, uh, let's see, what do we want to build? I think the obelisk. No, not the obelisk. I think it's the dead lake. Peering into the muddy water, each minion has a 10% chance of discovering a random item in the lake of the dead. Which I think is what we want give us extra wrath at the beginning 35 experience oh so they can just level up a little bit quicker and then this one is four to six souls so basically it allows you to get uh stuff built a little bit quicker so that costs 20 the dead lake also costs 20 we'll need a banshee and we will need um the other guys so no 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 we want the banshee so go ahead and fill the Banshee, and we'll craft you, and so we're going to make ourselves a Banshee, and then we're going to make ourselves a Wraith as well, because we're going to go grab those first two buildings. Now, we will have to um, uh, put units inside them uh, to man them, so we can actually get the crap, but let's just start here, and then we're going to use our 20 souls. And so you'll see, now I need to actually put someone in there, so we can actually uh, 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 get the 10% chance of discovering a random item. But I'll do that here in a second. That is not what I wanted. I wanted, yeah, this one. So we'll go spend all of our stuff right away. So let's go build some, um, which one is it? Creation P. Okay. I think we're going to build some skeletons because I think those are the cheapest ones. The other thing is we can actually like uh, upgrade our stuff so we can get like yellow or blue or purple bones. And then this guy's going to, uh, when we create them, if we use those uh, 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 skulls and stuff like that, he's going to be a little bit higher tier. And eventually later on, you can actually uh, uh, re-equip them and stuff like that. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. So I'm just going to throw a random skeleton in there. And then we also had this one. We're just going to put a skeleton in there. So hopefully we can get some more sp uh, spots. What's this one? Uh, finds a random part. Actually, you know what? I think that's the one I'd rather have done. 
Yeah, I think this is the one, uh, this one, because this is an item. Yeah, I'd rather have had the excavation versus the dead like, but whatever, we'll get enough points here uh, before too long. What else do we have? We have talents. Okay, so we start with two. This is essentially uh, uh, different things we can uh, do to upgrade ourselves. I think this is actually us. Um, and so we can do different things where like we can get different abilities. So this is our mana pool. Our mana pool doesn't go up after every fight. It doesn't always go to 100. So there's different things in here that we could do. For example, we can deal 20 stress damage to the target, and it's going to cost us 8 mana. Now, we would have to do something like this, where we can restore mana after every fight, or we're going to run out of mana. The other option is there are certain characters that, for example here, Aratus gains 8 mana, where the, if you use a certain ability, then you'll gain some mana as well. Now, to begin with, I don't really want to grab any abilities. I would like to work on our economy. So this one increases the chance of receiving parts at the end of battle so essentially we're going to get more body parts which is what i meant to do with um our our graveyard here which i screwed up and so the parts are then these different items so the more parts we can get early on the better and then we have another talent and i think i'm going to go ahead and give us a chance of giving more souls just so we can uh, build some more stuff quicker as well so that's all of our talents the humanorium we can't do anything there the graveyard we already looked at the artifacts okay so minions made up of four uncommon parts or more gain additional 20 vigor during battle so this is us we can equip ourselves with different abilities different items now this doesn't do anything for us yet because we don't have uncommon parts because we need uh we would have to have someone built with four uh at least four green i uh parts if they had four green parts then they would get an extra 20 vigor per during battle which is kind of nice but you know the, uh some of these that we'll pick up are like one use only and stuff like that but we're not there yet uh alchemy is nice because we can go ahead and for example grab these two armors and then if we crafted this, this would actually, I think, give us an uncommon armor as well. Uh, so two gray equals a green, two green equal a blue, two blue equal a purple, that kind of thing. Um, at this point, I'm not going to use any of that just because... Um, well, I don't want to waste it yet because we might need to uh, create more guys after the battle and stuff like that So that's pretty much I think everything here so we can go ahead and do our first fight um, We have to go do a battle right away and you'll kind of see how things work out We didn't talk about any of the items or stuff like that or any of the abilities. So we'll run over that um, Okay, so he, this is basically the battle order. So he got to go first So if we look at our character, we have a bunch of different stats uh, number one the attack is how much damage they'll do how much physical damage they'll do dread is how much uh, uh, uh stress attack they'll do and if we looked over at the enemy you can see that they only have like this guy only has 45 stress hp versus 55 vigor this one has 90 stress versus 80 45 so for the most part every one of these guys is going to tend to have more uh hp versus stress hp so generally doing stress damage is going to be a quicker way to kill them the downside is like i said earlier it's not 100% that when you get them to zero, you'll be able to kill them. Um, also, some units will do more dread damage. Some will do more uh, uh, just physical damage. Then we have accuracy, which is uh, accuracy over 100% increases the chance of hitting them with evasion. So uh, your evasion is this one. So you can see that they have 13% evasion. So the fact that we're 115%, I think means that we're not going to ever miss them. We only have 5% evasion. Luck is the chance of getting a critical hit. And then all of our units have armor, resistance, block, ward, and uh, initiative. Initiative is how quick they go. So since you have 6 plus 2, I think it's just a straight one. So he's at 6 plus 1. And then you can see he's at 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever, whoever has the higher number always gets to go first. So theoretically, he was at 8. So we tied at eight, and I guess the minion or the enemy got to go first because of that. Uh, armor basically reduces how much physical damage they take uh, by the amount of armor. So for example, if they did 10 damage and we had eight armor, we'd only take two uh, HP damage. Resistance is the same thing, but for magical damage, some certain attacks you get will do magical damage versus physical damage. Um, like see how this is uh, 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 blue? That means it's doing magical damage instead of physical damage. And then block basically basically will uh, negate a physical attack. So if I had one block, if they did physical damage to me, I would basically completely negate it unless they critted me. And then ward basically negates uh, magic damage. So that's basically all the stats. Then you have your HP. 
So she is our archer. She's really good in the back line. Uh, we'll talk about all her of the abilities. So first is chest piercer. It's a physical attack. It deals 80% uh, damage. So essentially does 80% of her physical damage. And then if it's a critical hit, she'll do 200% of this. So she'll do like 44 up to uh, 56 or 54. I can't add. Then she also has ignition. She can't use it in this slot. Um, it does only 50% damage, but it sets the target on fire, which then does an additional six to seven damage per turn and I think it's only oh for two turns so this total would do 12 damage plus 11 damage minimum so this would do at least uh what is that 24 25 damage 23 damage don't add on camera so it does a little bit more damage but it's damage over time overwatch is a stance anytime you have a stance basically uh it's kind of like overwatch and xcom so anytime an enemy would move i would do a uh, 50 damage to it so it, this is kind of nice because sometimes you get different abilities on different guys which will force them to move and so you can start doing a lot of different damage on them if you start moving them around and stuff like that the downside is if you are in a stance you can get knocked out of the stance if the AI actually moves you. If they have an ability that like pulls you forward or something like that, you would lose your overwatch stance. Then we have Think of Him. This is just a passive buff which gives us an extra 4 attack, 4 dread till the end of battle. Warning Shot just does stress damage. And then Rose for a Lady. Now this is our ultimate. You'll notice that at the bottom right, of the uh, thing it says it costs 50 so this is the 50 Roth and as the um, as we take damage as we use certain abilities our Roth is gonna get filled up and so essentially what this does is it um, does 50% damage but immediately uh, inflicts a critical hit which is really really nice it does about 24 damage I think so it's a little bit more also it does damage on every single uh, enemy so it's a really 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 good uh, ability she is super high uh, damage so I really really like her I think to start with we're gonna do think of him just to passively buffer it's a boring first turn I know but it's a passive buff that lasts rest of the uh, match all right so then we got our skeleton he has physical damage, uh, does 80%, 14 to 15 damage, um, and ignores armor, which is nice. He's got show them their place. So if he were in the back line, he would basically move forward three slots, and then he would knock someone back two slots. So that way you could see that kind of stacks really well with her ability. Um, and does physical damage also interrupts stances, which is nice uh, Then he has a stance as well, which gains six armor and six resistance right now He starts with resistance. He doesn't have any armor and uh, Enemies attack him more often so essentially it makes him a little more tanky and uh, so He'll reduce a little bit of damage. He's got embrace mediocrity. It's a stress attack So basically we link uh, up with the unit we take 30% uh, vigor damage and then the target loses 30% of their sanity So that's good if we're going for sanity attack, but I'm not really doing that and then smite which basically uh, deals 50% physical damage So you'll notice this one does a lot more damage 14 to 15, but this one one attacks twice for 8 to 10. The big thing is this one ignores armor. So none of the enemies have armor, so this one's just way, way better for us. And then last but not least, we have a, a stress attack here. So we're probably going to either smite or we're going to astound fortitude. These guys are all pretty low. I think I'm just going to go beat him dead. Yeah, I'm not really going to worry too much about um, uh, 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 taking too much damage and tanking and stuff like that. So he went on a stance. His stance at the beginning of next turn will deal 195% physical damage to a random target. That's actually pretty nice. So if I can move him out of position, I would be okay with that. Do I have any moves? I don't have any moves for him. So what does he got? He's got Heartless Slash. So he can't use Heartless Slash right here because he's in the third slot. Does 50% uh, damage and then does additional damage based on his armor and resistance. Um, so he would get an additional four, I think, because of this. Actually, I wonder if it's the sum of. So would he do in a total of eight? Because it'd be four plus four. So then that would be like 14 damage. That's actually kind of nice. This is a stress attack, uh, 10 to 11, and then does additional for each buff or debuff on the target. Uh, this one moves him back and we gain mana and he can remove any debuff he has on him. The Feetless Hope is a stance. So every time someone gets a buff, then he does stress damage to them. And uh, his, uh, um, 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 his ultimate is Abysmal Hunger. All enemies lose 12 vigor, and then he gets vigor based on how much damage he does. Uh, there's not a lot of heals 
in the game, so that's kind of nice. But we're going to start with the physical uh, attack one. It's going to do 12 to 14 damage uh, to the unit and the unit behind, and then a uh, critical hit will do 200% damage. I think we already started on this guy, so we're just going to go for these two guys. And so he's going to move up to the front spot. He's going to take one damage, so that attack only did like 9 HP. And then last but not least, we got the Zombers. So, he's got Volley, which is a magical attack, does 11 to 13 damage. He's got Buckshot, which deals 40%, only 6 damage, um, but it does hit uh, the two enemies behind it, so it's like a nice AoE. So it would do 6, 12, 18 total damage, where this only does 11. Um, then he's got Ignition, which does 6 to 6, but then it also sets the target on fire. So it's essentially the same as Buckshot, but instead of doing AoE on everyone, it just uh, 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 um, uh, fires one guy and then he can buff himself so he does 100% damage on the next one now bombardment is one of my favorite things uh, at the start of the next turn the zombie attacks four times each doing 50% physical damage to a, a random enemy um, so it's kind of nice uh, it's a stance and it's basically free but he's got to be in slot three to use it and so that's kind of what I'm going the zombie can also move forward sometimes he'll get pushed back um, but I also don't mind having him here the zombie can do his uh, uh, his slash from the third slot, which is nice. And then last but not least, he's got the cannonball, which is a physical attack, deals 200% damage uh, to one unit. So this guy is down to 24 HP. I don't think we can kill him this turn, right? No, we can only do 11 to 13. So I think I'm just going to do passive damage to everyone. Well, if we did this, this would do 6 damage, and then we'd burn both of these guys. Or would it be better to attack all three? I think I'm just gonna attack all three and be done with it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna attack all three units. That sucks. I was gonna say, there's also, the only downside with it is there's a chance that you just miss. <laughs> Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is every time the AI crits, every time the AI gets crit, the enemies get crit, they lose stress. Every time they crit you, they get stress back. Alright, so now we have enough uh, Roth so we can go ahead and uh, do some uh, crits, which is nice. And we're just going to do massive kill. amounts of damage on guys, which is great. So we're going to do a lot of damage there. Um, I can attack any one of these guys. I am going to do it on this guy just because I need him dead. There's a chance we do miss the attack, so doing it twice, doing a double attack is probably not the worst thing in the world. So we got our first dude dead. Um, for the most part, we've taken a little bit of damage, but we're not in a bad spot at all. Um, Dark Knight's now in the front, so we are going to go ahead and just slash, I think, and just kill. And we're just going to miss again. Wow. This is pretty bad luck. Pretty bad luck. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to do the magic damage now, and we're just going to burn both of these guys. What is with his accuracy? Oh my gosh, dude. I played him in the tutorial and did not have this much issues. Did not have this much issue with him. Just missing everything. That's kind of crappy. So, um, this should get the kill. Yep, there you go. 45 crit damage. Nice. So now we're down to the one HP guy. You can see he's really low on stress. I might try getting a stress kill here just to show how it, um, yeah, just to show what it looks like. <laughs> Dude, I have never missed this much before. This is kind of hilarious. All right, screw it. Physical damage. Let's go. What is going on? I guess they do have 14% invasion. My gosh, dude. This is terrible. Yeah, I have never had this much issue missing. Wow, all right. That was fun. That was fun. So you can see how much damage we took. We ended up getting 17 Architect Souls, two hearts, three weapons, a bone, and three um, brains. The brains are nice because you can use them to level up your units. Um, then we ended up finding four extra uh, souls or whatever it is. So that means we should have enough then for the excavation. Yeah, we have 21. We'll just need to use another skeleton. Um, let's go ahead and go creation. I need to create a skeleton. We can't create another wraith anymore. I think I will create another skeleton. Um... Yeah, and I'm going to create another Bride because she took a lot of damage on that fight. Okay. All right. So then with that, let's pop back into the graveyard. I need this excavation. We're going to go ahead and drop one of our new skeletons in there. I'm actually going to then um, probably just put the skeleton in there. I suppose I could have just used her, but I think I'm going to go put you here so you fully HP after this fight, and then we'll throw you over there. Um, we do have some brains, like I said. I would love to... You only need one brain to level up. 
Can I only use one brain? I guess I accidentally bumped him up to level three, which sure, whatever. So what I want to actually bump up is, so every time you level them up, you can uh, basically pick a perk for them. And uh, you can improve every one of these abilities in one of two ways. So if, on this physical attack, it does 50% uh, uh, damage and then equal to 50% the sum of the armor and the resistance. Now we can go 75%. So it does a little more base damage, but then only 50% still physical on the armor and resistance. Or we can go over here and only do 50%, but then 75% of the sum. So now if it's adding it up, 75% would be an extra 12 damage. 12 plus 6 would be 18. If we went here, um, that's going to be 8 plus 9, which is only going to be uh, 17. So this is still technically more damage. If we bump up his armor and resistance, though, this is going to get significantly better. So this is better to begin with, but this is going to be better as the game progresses. I think I'm going to do Serve Death Comes for well, Everyone. Yeah, and we should still have, yeah, because he's level, um, he's still got a couple more levels. So then we're also going to take the physical attack, this one, because this is the other ability we do. Um, this does an extra... Let's see, this does an extra two to three damage for each buff. Since we're probably gonna use this on the first attack, he's probably not gonna see anyone with buffs. So I think I'd rather just do this one where it's gonna do an extra eight damage. Oh, leveling it up, actually. I bumped up the armor too. Did that one bump up armor? I have no idea how we got more armor. Huh, all right. Well, now he's level three, so that's good. Uh, I don't think there's anything else for us to do right away. Um, we'll go ahead and do another fight just because we did a lot of talking on this one. Um, so we want to go back to the map, and so now we have two options. We can go to the ancient coffin, which is filled with items, or the grave, which gives us extra minions. Hmm. Good question. I actually have no idea. Let's go to the coffin, because I think I'm okay with uh, uh, units right now. So we can get a boon. So this gives us plus two initiative. And then once every two turn, we get plus two attack for two turns, stacks up to three times. We can get plus two armor. And then starting at, uh, if you start in position two, you get dread. We're not using dread, so probably not that great. And then when moving, plus four vigor for three turns. I actually really like this because he's gonna move back significantly. So giving him extra accuracy and extra HP seems really good. But then again, plus two attack seems really good on her. Ooh, I'm torn on this one. I think I'm gonna take the witch skin. I think I'm gonna take the witch skin sash and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on her. Now, if you die, I think you just lose, straight lose the item, which kind of sucks, but eh, it is what it is. And let's go ahead and launch into our next fight. Um, we will get to feel, uh, heal up after this battle. Um, this one's not scary at all. Once again, so you got extra attack now. We're going to think of him as well. What does this also give you? Oh, Dread as well. So she should be doing a lot of damage right now. So now with the higher initiative, she should almost always go first, which is nice. All right, so we're going to go ahead and um, none of these guys have armor again. Who was the assassin? Wasn't he the assassin? But the problem is I can't really do damage on him. So I'm just gonna go for the first guy. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I think we're just gonna go straight for the kill again. Yeah, let's go straight for the kill. Forget the, um, I'm a little worried about him moving into the third slot, but um, HP doesn't really matter right now because we're gonna be able to heal up after this fight. Okay, so how do we wanna do this? Do we wanna ignite or would we rather do damage on all three? I think we're gonna do damage on all three. Hey, we actually did damage on all three. That really wasn't that much damage. Yeah, I think I should maybe focus fire instead. Yeah, I think I should focus fire instead here in the future. All right, so you'll be dead because I'll be able to crit because I have enough. Oh, I'm just missing. All right, well, you're dead anyways. So there you go. She's got the kill. She's doing a lot of damage right now, which is great. She's got plus two attack. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking I'm liking how she's looking right now. So you have the shield bash, which is just stress damage. Don't think I care about that. Just do the double attack. Let's get the assassin guy because he's got that annoying buff. So let's kill him off as quick as possible. You got a debuff, which we could remove, but I don't really care. I'm just gonna focus fire this guy. Yeah, I'm just gonna focus fire him instead of the magic, because we can just do this. And then we have enough where this will just instantly kill him if it hits. So there you go, there you go, there you go. Now we could try getting the stress kill as well. 
I think I am going to try getting the stress kill just to kind of show you guys what it looks like. I don't really have that much stress um, abilities. The other thing is, once you get him, cer uh, cer like, uh, once he loses a certain amount of sanity, then he becomes insane. And everyone has a different insane uh, condition. So we'll see how this looks. Now, he's still not insane yet. Um, we'll do this again. This should make him insane, I would think. You know, he's still not insane, man. Still not insane. Huh. Usually they go insane. I wonder if he's just, uh, ignore, like, if it's just impossible for him to go insane. I don't know. We'll just buff you for now, because I'm not really going to worry about you, because I just want to do the stress damage. So the fact that I put him at zero, there is his insanity. Means the next time I hit him with the stress damage, he might get, have a heart attack and die. He might not. He also is hopeless, so he loses negative 50% to his attack. Uh, his luck is zero. He loses all arm and resistance, and he loses all block and ward. Sometimes when they're at zero, they will be more likely to um, backstab their own friends. Sometimes they actually get valor, I think is what it is, where he actually gets bonuses instead of negatives. So we'll see if this actually will kill him. There's a chance it doesn't though. No, it did kill him. Okay. And so we killed him by making him have a heart attack. Also, I think when they lose uh, stress, uh, they're more likely to run away too. So we grabbed a token. I actually don't know what the token is. I have no idea what that is. Probably an item. She gained 30 HP. We got some ectoplasm, which is extra evasion. And then we gained some more stuff. Okay, cool, cool. So, we also leveled up these guys. Oh, we can actually put this. Is this a one use only, I wonder? I wonder if that's a one use only. Or... Or... No, it's a creation thing. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, but then what about What is this then hunky I guess it just shows up here. I don't think that like changes what we can create or anything like that, huh? All right Where is your what am I looking for? I'm looking for artifacts. Yeah, we didn't get any artifacts. All right, that's fine Okay, so let's level you guys up skeleton. We are using this attack the smite one so dealing eight to ten damage and then this performs additional attack for each buff on the target that seems kind of nice and then there's a four percent chance to immediately kill four percent's pretty bad i think they're more likely to have buffs so i think i'm gonna roll that way and then our zombies also level two right now i'm not quite sure which one i want on you i really like bombardment also, I don't know how you level these up, by the way. You might have to level up all the other ones first. They might have to be a certain level. So, 60%, um, this one does magical damage then instead with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do more fire damage. We could curse him, which is stress damage instead. Physical attack, physical attack. Or we can do extra magic damage. Ignores ward. Or ignores resistance hmm I think they're more likely to have resistance versus wards um, so I think I'm actually gonna take this and we're just gonna ignore his resistance so if they have any resistance here in the future they're just gonna straight die okay we unlocked another talent so once again we're still um, this allows us to replace parts with a minion with a higher quality part of the same type I'm gonna go grab that right away and what we could do now is we could actually come here and replace because we had the blood so I can go here and I can actually replace her blood with this. Now, what does that do? That just gives her extra three accuracy. Did that actually count? Yeah, so that just straight counted. So now you have extra three accuracy, which seems kind of nice. Um, it wasn't there another one? Oh yeah, there's an ectoplasm. Who had the ectoplasm? Uh, just you, so I am gonna go use this right away. And this gives you a little bit of extra HP. I think that's fine. Because once again, if I can get four uncommons, remember they're gonna have a little bit of extra HP because of his ability. Um, let's go ahead and march out the dungeon. And we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go heal up. So we're just gonna use that and heal up. Now I do have in our graveyard, we were healing up you. Um, I will put you out here right now. I'm not using, I don't have a use for you. I wonder if we could go build something else. Hmm. 
get an extra 12 Roth at the beginning of battle seems kind of nice. I think I'd rather build the library. Yeah, so we're going to need a Dark Knight. Can I create a Dark Knight? Can I create a Dark Knight? No. No. What are we missing? We are missing armor. All right, well, that sucks. That's fine. So let's go do one more battle, and then we'll wrap up the episode. Uh, I want Battle Squad 1, please. Yeah, because here's the problem. We could find ourselves where we don't have enough crap um, to deal with it. All right, these guys suck a little bit. So when he dies, all his allies are going to recover 30 sanity. Yeah, and then this was the, the stabby dude. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely want the extra damage to begin with. The fact that this buff lasts the entire match, I think, is why we just need to roll with it every single time. So he buffed the unit. That's good, because remember, I can do three attacks now. Yeah, I like that. And we're going to... Um, I don't want to push him back, though. No, that doesn't push him back. Okay, good. Good. So we'll be able to three attack him with the skeleton. Crit debuff. Yeah, that's fine. And then this will be three attacks. Nice. Nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I'm glad I picked that one. All right, and then you're going to ignore resistance. Does anyone even have resistance? No. It's not like they have a ward either. So this is six damage. How much HP does he have? He's at 33. So this is 11 damage. This is six damage. He's not going to live for two turns. Yeah, he's not going to live for two turns. So I'm just going to do that. Them to pieces. My hope is I had enough to um, do that, but that's not going to happen. Um, Is this a permanent? Wow, so we could just keep buffing her in, uh, forever. Might as well just get the kill. Yeah, might as well just get the kill while we're here. And then next turn, we'll go hopefully for the crit across the board. Um, I could have overwatched too because there's a lot of people moving around, but it's fine. It's fine. All right, so he doesn't have any buffs, but we'll just go ahead and get the uh, kill here. We'll focus fire. Uh, we might as well do this, and then we should be able to crit kill with you. Yeah, you're at 20, so the crit will get the kill. Thank you for missing, finally. So then with that, I think I would rather... I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna ignite you. I thought that also ignited the one in the back. I am incorrect. All right, so that will get the kill. 23 damage. Good, good. He's on fire, so he's gonna be taking a lot of damage uh, over time. Really, he should be dead. He's taking seven to eight damage. Uh, traps suck, by the way. I don't remember what traps do. I think the traps do damage every turn. I don't remember. Anyways, you have seven to eight damage. So all I need to do is about 10 damage. This will kill you. I think I'm gonna do this. He didn't have armor, good. I picked the right one. Cause this only does six to seven damage. This is my all right, that was a kill. <laughs> I was actually trying not to get the kill there, but whatever, whatever. So we might as well do max damage here. This will push him back into the third slot. But once again, we're just trying to get the kill. So I might as well use that ability. Getting the crit on her isn't as necessary this turn. So he took a lot of freaking damage, but we're good. Okay, never mind. Never mind. All right, please get the kill. Thank you. Yeah, all right, so we're in a good spot. We're a little hurt. So we're going to need to go rest him after this fight. We grabbed some Architect Souls. Um, we got some armor, so we can actually make another Dark Knight, which is good. Uh, and then we grabbed another Heart. That's a... Uh, ooh, okay. Okay. You actually have the Heart, so I think I'm going to immediately go give her a Heart, too. Because I'm trying to level her up, in case you didn't know. And then let's go over here to Creation. I need another Skull. Uh, skeleton, by the way. More bones. So give me the skeleton, and we're going to go replace you. We're going to pop back in there, and we're going to go put you there. Okay, I have to actually click it. So you heal up to full HP at the end of this turn. And then, can I make a Dark Knight? Uh, yes, I can. So we're going to go ahead and make a Dark Knight. Uh, but I don't want to use this Ectoplasm. Wait, don't you already have Ectoplasm? Yeah, you already had the plus two Vigor. Plus two Evasion. Would I rather have the Vigor or the Evasion? Probably the Evasion. I'm just gonna leave it. I don't want the plus two. Yeah, don't use the green one. Cause this guy's just basically, um, we can actually do it, I think by common. I think if we click it that way, it's fine. Oh no, no, Brian, Dark Knight, Dark Knight. Yeah, just do common, Phil. Cause we could save that for maybe someone else later in the game. All right, cause this guy's just gonna get consumed right away. 
So, library, give me the Dark Knight, build, and then what we can do is we can put you there. And then you're just going to slowly start gaining XP, which I like. Okay, so then pop over to her. You have a level now. We already did... Do we not level her up? Oh, we haven't leveled her up yet. So get extra damage? Or straight attack. Critical hit stuns the target. A critical hit will deal 250% damage. Man, you're never going to use that one, and we're not using this. I think I'm just going to take the extra passive damage, because that seems to be what we're using the most of. All right, well, we're going to wrap this episode up, so hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. Oh, wait, by the way, how do we upgrade this? Ah, okay, so to upgrade, then you get more Architect Souls. So that's what we're going to use Architect Souls. We'll probably end up doing the Abode of Wrath next, but I'm not super concerned about that for now. So anyways, like I said, hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, and show your support. I will see you guys next episode. Bye, everybody!